settled down. Okay, guys, welcome to the talking news and chasing a murder. We're starting to kick this off the way I wanted to when I started this channel. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, tap that notification bell for notifications for new uploads. So we're going to be talking about Robert uh, Camu, who is 27 years old. Okay, guys, as you know, we have covered some very odd stories lately, but this one headline by CNN really drew my interest. And that headline read, um, A California woman is missing. Her boyfriend rapped about killing someone and burying the body. So who is this woman that he might be talking about? So this is Amanda Custer. She is 31 years old. She has an eight-year-old son. And it says that she went to Lies College of Beauty on her Facebook page. Her Facebook page says that she lives in Monrova, California, as well as um, this guy that we're going to be talking about, Robert Canu Camus. So he also lives in that same area. So it's in the vicinity of 600 block of, uh, it's spelled B-A-G-U. E-R-O Road, which is in Monrova, um, or Arcata, actually. Anyway, so get this. So neighbors witnessed and told investigators that Amanda, they seen um, what looked like Amanda's lifeless body. And it was being carried out by her boyfriend, Robert, um, where he placed her inside a, t a 2017 gray Prius with a hatchback. So, in the storage area back there. Now, I don't know how I missed the story, but on August 8th of 2019, the homicide uh, detective Scott shared photos of Robert's vehicle and um, a timeline. They said that they were alerted to domestic violence dispute earlier before Amanda disappeared. And this is at the 600 block of Bequero. I hope I said that right. Road in Monrova, California. So, according uh, to this article, after placing Amanda's body in the, uh, the, you know, the hatchback area of his vehicle, Robert drove off from his residence, traveling in eastbound through the cities of Glendora and Claremont. He then stopped briefly at a convenience store. Uh, near the area of Little Creek and from this point police say that there is a five-hour gap in his whereabouts so and investigators are hoping that the public might be able to come forward and fill in that missing information sometime at this point uh, Robert Canoe's uh, I'm sorry Camus parents call 911 and investigators come out uh, to their home, which, uh, you know, this home, he, the parents share with their son, Robert Camus. So police found evidence of an assault in Robert's bedroom. That's according to investigators. They did recover some residue. They recovered it from the bedroom as well as his hatchback, hatchback Toyota vehicle. And uh, right now, that residue is being tested to determine to, uh, who it belongs to. Okay, so Monday, the police were looking uh, for Robert as a suspect, what, you know, as a number one suspect. And the fact that Amanda was missing, no one could find her. There was no clue where she was. And it's during this time, and it's late Monday night, I believe, uh, y'all can... I'm having trouble with the dates on this one because I've heard different dates, but I believe it is Monday and uh, he is seen at a Skid Row bar. The name of this bar was King Eddie Saloon. It was approximately about 1 a.m. in the morning that uh, Robert was recorded rapping on Mike Knight at King Eddie's saloon and the guy that actually recorded it was Michael Moore he said it was Mike Knight and Robert was looking a bit tipsy he took the mic and began to rap 
As seen here, you can see he locks his eyes onto the lens and begins wrapping with a very strong force. Okay, let's have a listen. You don't even know about news. I kill my every day. For you guys a little bit, but uh, Michael Moore said as he recorded that his eyes locked on. They didn't uh, lock off, and you can see where he was feeling it, and quote, there was some hardcore rappers up in there, and they just stopped. Michael couldn't. Pretty much, uh, their jaws were kind of dropping to the words coming out of uh, Robert's mouth. Okay, so Michael Moore is seen here being interviewed by a news team. And uh, he, he um, sorry, Michael, getting the names mixed up, said Robert walked to him, walked up to him um, at the bar and asked him, where was he going to post this video at? And Moore told Robert everywhere. Robert's response to Moore was, cool. Um, Michael said that after that, Robert left the bar with uh, some other uh, white guy. It really wasn't until the next day uh, Michael says that they really were able to put those lyrics in perspective and got the gravity of the situation. So when Robert uh, actually was located on Tuesday and he held police at bay on 2nd and Hill while he was uh, held up unresponsive for five hours after a car uh, was after his car was spotted by LAPD. Police actually had to use tear gas to fish Robert out of the uh, gray Toyota. Finally, they were able to make an arrest, but there was no sign of Amanda. Interestingly, uh, Robert and Amanda have had a relationship off and on uh, two years with a lot of domestic violence in their history. In fact, uh, Robert was supposed to uh, show up for a court date on Monday, but uh, it was a no-show. So, um, also, Amanda sought a restraining order against Robert back in February, alleging that Robert was verbally, I'm sorry, verbally and mentally and emotionally abusive towards her. And that's according to the New York Post. In May, Robert was charged with domestic violence, burglary, uh, battery, and assault. Robert pleaded not guilty and, uh, to these charges and was released, then placed under uh, house arrest pending trial. So, like I mentioned, Robert was arrested last week on a warrant alleging that uh, he, um, I'm sorry, here violated the terms of his electric monitoring and uh, was held in jail without bail. He has not been uh, charged formally with the kidnapping of his girlfriend, Amanda. And uh, like I said, you can look this up on the New York Post. Uh, they have a pretty good write-up on this story. Okay, so what I'm hearing is she did not live with Robert, uh, Amanda actually lived right down the road in her grandparents' home. She did have a, a she has an eight-year-old son who is with other family members right now. Her father has been pleading for public to come forward and try to piece in those gaps. It's very important. They really need to find her in order to uh, press forward and bring justice for Amanda. You know, it didn't make sense to me if she had filed a restraining order against Robert and then um, went to her house, I'm sorry, uh, Robert's house and his parents' house after, you know, going through so much trouble to do that. So he must have, you know, really 
had possibly been angered and had this planned. As I, uh, you know, that speculation, of course, yeah, I'm trying to figure out why in a world, of course, a lot of us wonder why do people do what they do? And it just seems to me that um, he was angry and he had, you know, he knew what he wanted to do. And he just, he was in that, I don't give a damn frame of mind. That was evident when, uh, you know, on that video that Michael Moore shared with us. So interestingly, uh, looking at the faces of the people, you could see that they were very confused, not sure what to think, yet they were still trying to be supportive of the guy. All I can say is thank God that he was dumb enough to screw up this bad because otherwise we would have had a, another a woman, you know, not getting the justice she deserves. You know, guys, come on. You know, if your man has you, you know, drawing up a restraining order, I'm telling you right now, ladies, that is not a relationship you want to ever be in. And if they call you, especially after a restraining order, saying, you know, why don't you come over here, hun? Hell no. You got to be smarter than that, ladies. And what I'm wanting to know is, was his parents home during, you know, when this happened? I did get a lot of information for you guys. I spent uh, since 9 o'clock this morning working on this. I wanted to get it out because I'm falling behind on getting these stories out. But yeah, you know, this is something... It's got me curious. I did, you know, I do have a lot of information, but not as much as I would like. Can you believe this guy? The narcissist, guys. Oh, my gosh. It's just crazy. So what do you think about, you know, his rap episode or show or whatever you want to say? It was freestyle rapping. It was Mike Knight at uh, King Eddie's Saloon. Please drop a comment in uh, the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And I want to say I love you guys. I appreciate you watching. Also, please share information. It's very important. The most important thing about this is getting her information out to help fill in those gaps. Um, please really need our help. All right, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.